And um, then the next thing I want to show is the reaction that we have at both uh, ends here. These are the chemical reactions. In, in the case of lead, this is a lead battery, okay? So there are other types of reactions out there. And what you see here is, again, the negative pole is on the right-hand side of your screen. The positive pole is on the left-hand side. And the uh, right-hand one, the, the negative side, is related to the lead whereas the positive uh, or left-hand side is related to the lead dioxide, okay, which is a different, uh, you oxidize uh, lead essentially. PB, by the way, is plumum, uh, that's the Latin for lead, okay? And uh, that's where they got the plum bob, by the way, you know, uh, uh, they, they used to um, uh, measure uh, the walls the, that the Romans built, um, they used to measure it with a plum bob and they also used to call that the perpendiculare, which was perpendicular, what, to the horizon. So the guy put, the, you know, was out there. Where's my little ball with the string? Oh, I lost it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, you know, they had the, the plumb bob uh, held from uh, a string, and they measured to see if the wall was straight. And, and uh, since they did it against the uh, horizon there was a perpendicular then they they got it from the plumb bob which was called the perpendiculare plumbing also comes from yeah from plumbing lead, also it used to be done with lead yeah and and, 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 and again plum uh, plumum is the uh, latin word for for lead uh, we don't have any problem in spanish because we call it uh, plomo so we we use almost the same latin word so we have no problem looking at a pb there uh, Americans might have a, a different version, you know, they, they would r rather see, <laughs> uh, you know, a different uh, code. But yeah, PB is plumum, lead. And um, what you see here is the reaction. You have lead plus um, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, <clears throat> and you're going to have a disassociation. Uh, in, in the water and also in the reaction with the uh, plate, with the uh, sulfuric plate, uh, with the, I'm sorry, the lead plate. And you're going to end up with, sul uh, with a sulfate, uh, uh, lead sulfate, which is that uh, bluish, uh, light blue PBSO4. And you're going to release two hydrogen atoms, but they're not atoms. You see a little plus sign right after that, 2H+. Plus. That means that these two hydrogen atoms are, are anions. They, they've lost their, their electron, and they remain as two positive charges. There's only a proton. In fact, that's what they're called, really, when they lose uh, a, 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 an, a hydrogen atom that has lost its electron is known as a proton, <laughs> period. And, the, and, uh, yeah, and that's how it's used in chemistry. They like to talk about proton and not to say, oh, a hydrogen atom that's lost uh, an electron or an anion. No, it's, um, it's simply called a proton. And, but what's important here is what I circled there at the end and made kind of big. Should have made the one on the bottom also big. But, well, two electrons. And, and since we don't know what an electron looks like, I just put a, a little E. You know, it doesn't really have a... A code other than the E and uh, followed by a negative sign that's what everybody understands for an electron so the important thing is that we release two electrons into the solution and those are the two carriers that's why that lead remember we're, we're trying to analyze what's happening on the right hand side here right we had lead PB we put so we have sulfuric acid in water that's coming against that plate there's going to be a reaction it's going to release two hydrogen atoms. I'm going to show that in a second a little more graphically so it's not so abstract. And it's going to release two electrons. And these two electrons are what's going to make that plate charge negatively. That's what's going to be fed into whatever cable you, you stick you know, on that terminal. Okay? So that's, where, that's why that, um, that plate is uh, negative because there's two electrons being released. Now, the first question a rational individual asks is, why don't the two electrons that are negative join up with the two hydrogen atoms, which are positive? Well, there is no answer. To <laughs> you know, the way this is done is by, with a magic wand. They say, well, all this hydrogen disassociated itself, it's running around as ions, you know, as anions. 
uh, positive ions. And the electrons are also like these little beads are floating in the water also like loose, just waiting for someone to put a cable there. And you say, well, why don't they recombine and form, you know, normal hydrogen? I mean, isn't that the what hydrogen wants? Hydrogen wants an electron. And here's an electron floating around, boom, chops it and gets it in, you know, sucks it in. We're back to normal. And that's not the way they do it. They say, uh, look, there's this reaction and these things are floating around. They have to... They have to justify where we got the two electrons. And you're going to see the difference with a rope model of light, which is really rational compared to this. This is no explanation, just as two electrons are is. free. It just is. Uh, because we need those two electrons to show that how we're going to feed, you know, the cable, the copper cable that you're going to connect to that terminal. That's why they, they've got those two electrons here. Can't it be said that this chemical reaction only happens when you put a cable there no no the the reaction is already there the reaction oh, wow. uh, has already created a storage of electrical charge and what do we mean by that we mean that it stored two electrons <laughs> somehow you know they're, they're in the water just uh, trying to escape the, the hydrogen now <laughs> because these hydrogen sharks they're trying to eat these little electron fish and and the little fish are getting away trying, trying to escape the the big shark that's trying to eat them and, and that's essentially the explanation. You have no explanation because they should recombine and we should not see th that equation there, that uh, chemist chemical equation. 2H plus plus 2E minus. You shouldn't see that because the 2E minus should combine with the 2H pluses. Period. No, We're done. There's nowhere to go. So right. What's, so what's happening on the other side? Okay. And now on the other side, on the brown side there, and again, I try to color code this uh, as much as possible. Uh, this is the positive side, and here you have, you started out with uh, lead dioxide, it's an oxidation of lead, and some of the water, you know, you've got this in, uh, you got sulfuric in water, and obviously all these things react together, but the main part is that the water combines with the uh, lead dioxide, and what it does, it produces four hydroxide, hi hi hydroxide, yeah, H-O, uh, it's uh, O-H, it's, um, it's called hydroxyls, that's what they're called. But, you know, it's OH. And what is OH? Well, it's just, uh, you know, you heard of H2O, that's water. Well, remove one H from that, and you got OH, and, you know, the oxygen is still wanting something there. So, you know, it's, it's kind of waiting for something, to, for a reaction to happen. So what does it do? It borrows electrons from the lead, and lead has four electrons in its outer shell. So you have four OH, each one pulls an electron. And now lead is starved of electrons. It, it's missing four, ele four electrons. So it's positively charged four times. Not once, not twice, not thrice, four times, okay? You removed electrons from the lead simply through the reaction. And so now lead has stored capacity, potential, whatever you want to call it, it, it wants electrons. So we've got on this side, one guy who wants to get rid of electrons, which is the lead side, the uh, one on the right. And you got the one on the left, the positive side, it's positive, it wants to receive electrons. It's starved of electrons. And that's the status of the battery before you plug anything to it. You know, here we have these two, st store, uh, two plates storing potential <laughs> does the water does the water not affect the lead on the right side and does the sulfuric acid not affect yeah. the the dioxide on the left yes of course uh there are different reactions i i put the simplest of reactions just to, for the ease of explaining mm -hmm. because i uh, i think what i'm interested in showing is not all the chemistry i don't think you're so interested in that you may not be chemically inclined I think you're interested in finding out, well, what's going on in that secret world that we can't see? Well, what reactions are going on? And, and the important thing is, you know, how does the plate on the right and on the left get their charges? Yeah. This is it. There, there are other reactions, but you don't need them. You don't need them to understand what you just heard here. In, one, in the uh, one on the right, the lead, you got two electrons free for reasons that only God knows and they're floating around together with the hydro positive hydrogens, and for some reason they don't recombine, 
but the answer is that the reason they need those two electrons is that's going to be the charge that they're going to feed through the wires that you connect to the terminal. And on the other side, you create four positive charges in, in the lead by creating a, when the water reacts with uh, lead and creates uh, four hydroxyls. If hydroxyls take away that electron. I don't know why they have more power than the lead also. I mean, there, there's a lot of questions here, but let's grant that. What it is, is now the lead is charged positively because it wants to have an electron. So the guy on the right wants to give them and the one on the left wants to receive them. That's, that's a battery, okay? Now, what happens? Well, we're going to do a little, um, uh, I'm going to show the reaction in a little more graphical way so that you can see it here. And what's happening here, you get sulfuric acid. This is the first one. This is the one on the right again. And what you have is sulfuric acid. And it's going to lose the two hydrogen atoms that you see there on the top and on the bottom, the gray ones. And you're going to have a sulfate ion, and that's going to combine with a lead ion. And you're going to release two hydrogen atoms, pluses. They're not even atoms, they're ions, and, uh, and two electrons. And the two electrons are the ones we're concerned about because those are going to provide the charges on the uh, plate on the right. And then we have the other side, uh, the reaction on the other side. And again, I try to illustrate these things. Let me put them one right underneath the other. I don't think you need to see my face, okay? And uh, here you see, let's see if I can put that a little higher. And here what you see is the, um, uh, what's happening on the left-hand side of, of, uh, of that battery. You have lead dioxide. It combines with water. That's essentially the one that's going to do the trick. There are other reactions. It also reacts with sulfuric and et cetera, but this is the important part. And you're going to end up with lead with four positive charges because the OH, the hydroxyl, removed four of its electrons, it stole it from it. And again, the question is, why don't they recombine again? Because uh, that liquid is in constant uh, touch with the lead. You would think that whenever it touches the lead, again, it delivers the, the electron back to the lead, you know, that it stole. Or it would at least give one back or two maybe. You know, there should be all kinds of things in there. And no, they keep them separate because they need to explain why lead is positively charged on the left-hand side. Uh-huh. Um, what happens to the dioxide part? What happens to the... The O2. Well, the O2. See, you have two O2s there. In other words, look at PB dioxide, yeah, right? Yeah. You have the PB is the, the lead. That's the big ball there. And, and the two red two balls, balls are the oxide, right? Yeah. Well, those two red balls plus two H2Os, I only put one in there because I just wanted to show the reaction. But if you combine those two oxide, two red ones, mm -hmm. plus two red ones in the H2O, right? Mm -hmm. Put a two in front of that and you got two more there. That's going to be your four... Uh, red ones on the other side of the green arrow. Oh, okay, gotcha. And in the same way, if you put a two in front of the H2O, you're going to have four yeah. hydrogen, and that's also going to show up as four on the other side. I didn't put the numbers because I didn't think it was important. I think I wanted people yeah, to yeah, concentrate yeah, just, on the fact of how the charges are being kept yeah. and not on, uh, on the specific chemical. Where all the atoms are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this is not a, a perfect chemical reaction because I was interested more in the physics of yeah. it, of what's happening. Uh, lead is going to, in the, in the bottom one, in the uh, left-hand side, it's going to retain uh, four positive charges because the OH, the hydroxyl group, stole them all, okay, out of its valence shell, which is four. Okay, so now, uh, let me put myself back here so you can see me again, okay? Let me drink some mate to get my energy. Charging your, winding your, your ropes. 